Hi, my name is Elaine Evans. I'm an extension educator at the University of Minnesota, and I am presenting on Rusty Patch Bumblebee Identification for Queens. This is a presentation that I put together along with Zachary Portman, who is a research scientist in the Caribou B Lab here at the University of Minnesota. We created this guide because monitoring is crucial for recovery of the rusty patch bumblebee. We cannot collect specimens because it is an endangered species, so field ID skills are really important. Not only that, but photos are often used for verification of specimens, and it's important to know the key characters to focus in on for those photos so that verification can occur. And this ID guide focuses on queens because queen ID is different than it is for workers. So this is an overall color pattern in general for the rusty patch bumblebee. So the thorax is mostly yellow with a few black hairs and a black blank spot kind of in the middle of the thorax. The first two tergites are yellow and then the rest of the abdomen is black. What you'll see is missing is the rusty patch. So counter to what the name is, the queens of the rusty patch bumblebee typically don't have that rusty patch that you'll see in workers, except for when they do. So you should know that color patterns are highly variable in, in bumblebees, and occasionally a rusty patch bumblebee queen may have that. So that character, the characters based on the color patterns shouldn't be the only things that you're looking at for bumblebee ID, though they can be very helpful. It's important to know when to look for queens. So these are data from Leif Richardson's Bumblebees of North America Occurrence Records database. And this is divided up for north, what we see for the pattern north of 42 degrees, latitude and what we see south of, of that 42 degree latitude mark. And so you can see that they're out, the queens are out fairly early in the spring. So um, starting in April further south and um, kind of late April into May is when you see those spring queens coming out. There's another bump of queens when new queens are produced in the fall. So you can expect to see queens fairly regularly in um, August and September as well. Most of the rest of the time through the year, we don't see queens out because it's just the workers that are out foraging and the queens are remaining in their nest. And then after October through March, the queens are overwintering. So we, we don't see them then either. Key characters for the rusty patch bumblebee are that they are large and robust. The faces are short and they have many black hairs on top of their head. The thorax is mostly yellow and the hairs tend to be pretty short and velvety. And the abdomen T1 and 2 are completely yellow. So there are a few other species that can be commonly confused with the rusty patch bumblebee queens. So Vegans and Sandersoni, or the half black and Sanderson's bumblebees, those two have really similar color patterns. So um, I'm just gonna lump them together in terms of explaining the differences between them. The Rufus Inctus, red belted bumblebees, Bombus perplexus, confusing bumblebees, Bombus impatiens, the common Eastern, and Griseocolus, the brown belted. So going into those key characters, that first one of them being large and robust, here are some pictures of, um, of these similar queens. And you can see, um, and some other queens in general, you can see that Aphanus is not the largest of queens that are out, but they do tend to be on the, on the larger end. Um, the most similar color pattern is Vegans. You can see they're, they're um, quite a bit bigger than that. So, um, so the most similar color pattern is Vegans, which also has those the two yellow stripes on the abdomen. But you can see that um, the Aphanus do tend to be larger and just kind of plumper. 
so they also have that short round face so um, comparing the faces of Afinus and Vegans um, it's important to to um, know what you're looking at here so we're not including the mandibles that are poking out down below here we're just going down to um, to to that part of the face and you can see that on Afinus it is um, much rounder and on vegans they have um, a longer face. So another way to think about that is looking at the malar space that is this area between the eye and the mandible. Some people talk about it as a cheek um, and that malar space is shorter on Afinus than it is on vegans. So also when we moved on to the, the thorax, the, um, they have these yellow medium length hairs and um, there's a, the black bare spot in the center which tends to have a few black hairs around it. Comparing to Bombas Vegans, um, Athenis has shorter, more even hair. So you can kind of see with the side angle here that vegans tend to be, um, have longer, shaggier hair on their thorax. Um, comparing, so again, on the, moving to the abdomen, T1 and 2 are completely yellow. Um, one confusing pair here is looking at um, Bombus rufusinctus, which is highly variable in color patterns. And one of the color patterns is having these um, two, uh, mostly yellow on those first two abdominal segments. Rufusinctus does tend to have a rounder face like Aphinus, but Rufusinctus will always um, have some black hairs at the edge. It may just be right at the edge. They do tend to also have more black hairs between the wing bases. Griseocolis has black at the edges of, of, of that second abdominal segment, and they also usually have this, this um, obvious rusty brown swoop, which can be variable, but um, they won't have yellow hairs going all the way to the edge like Aphinus does. In um, Bombus impatiens, that second tergite is all black. So um, it can sometimes be difficult to see where those tergites are out in the field, but if you get a good shot of the abdomen, um, we should be able to, to pick that out. So reviewing here, the key characters for the Rusty Patch bumblebee are that they tend to be on the large and robust end of bumblebees, the queens that we see out in the spring. The heads, they have the short face. They tend to have a lot of black hairs on the top of the head. The thorax is yellow hairs um, predominantly and tend to be cropped, kind of velvety looking. And on the abdomen, those first two tergites are completely yellow. So what do you do if you see a rusty patch bumblebee queen in the spring? It's important to get a photograph that shows those key characters, record the latitude and longitude of your location. You can share those sightings on either Bumblebee Watch or iNaturalist. If on a flower, it's important that you ID that flower or take photos that would enable people to, to um, identify what photos they're using. If they're nest searching, we're very interested in learning more about what habitat rusty patch bumblebee queens prefer for, for nesting. So um, if, if they are flying low to the ground and, and exploring areas for nests, it would be great if you could take photos of the habitat, take notes on surrounding vegetation and ground cover, and generally note their behavior. For more information on Rusty Patch and um, other bees in general, you can visit the, the Bee Lab. We also have more information on bumblebee identification at the Bee Atlas website through the University of Minnesota. And I highly recommend the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service webpages on Rusty Patch bumblebees. So they have lots of information about what to do for surveying bees, for um, 
flowers that they prefer, and where you can expect to find rusty patch bumblebees. Thank you for your attention and good luck out there looking for rusty patch bumblebee queens.